Hi friends, it's a pleasure to explain to you the diffractive multifocal IUL signs behind the diffractive multifocal IULs and uh, the principles behind it. I get a lot of questions wherever I go, people trying to understand how a diffractive multifocal IUL works. And uh, I thought of uh, it is necessary to explain it in a simple and lucid manner, um, how this diffractive multifocal IULs work. Now, I have written about it in my blog, quickguide.org, about how this multifocal IULs work, whether it's a diffractive bifocal or a trifocal IUL. And uh, you can go and read about that in my article in quickguide.org. But for those who are not very comfortable in reading, you can uh, go through this video. Well, in that article, I had started by describing today's lighthouse optics, you know, a uh, lighthouse dates back to the medieval ages, even to the Roman Empire. But in those days, the lighthouse was very complicated to build because you had to build very huge lenses that would send the light parallel um, to the distant sea for the ships to navigate. But then came and uh, you know uh, Jean Fresnel, who kind of you know understood that much of the refraction that is done by the lighthouse optics can be actually done by much thinner lenses if they can be designed in a sawtooth pattern. This is also called as Fresnel lenses or the kinoform lenses. So what Fresnel did is actually he kind of designed this a sawtooth pattern lens that would do the same job like that of the big bulky, you know, refractive lenses uh, in the medieval ages. Um, but they will shade some of the weight and would be much lighter and easier to build. Now, before we go uh, deeper into the science of the diffractive multifocal IULs, <clears throat> it is important for us to understand some basic concepts. First, what is a wavelength of light? So wavelength, if I stop this animation over here, is the distance from the crest to the crest, to successive crests. Or if we take the trough, it is the distance between the trough and the trough, two successive troughs. That distance is the wavelength of light. <clears throat> um, what is a crest? The crest is the high of a wave. What is a trough? The trough is the low of a wave. Well, to understand how the diffractive multifocal IULs work, we need to understand how diffraction actually works and what is diffraction. So here I am trying to explain you uh, with the help of a simple animation. And uh, let's start a wave uh, of light that is approaching a slit over here. A slit is an opening. And as you can see here that the as the wave of light passes through the slit, it kind of spreads out. Actually, um, if you see that slit, uh, the wave of light that is passing through the center of the slit, uh, they kind of go in, in straight lines, but as they um, hit the edges of the slit here, they kind of spread out. And the simple definition of diffraction is that when light uh, hits these edges, it kind of spreads out in other directions than, than where it was supposed to go if it had traveled in a straight line. So diffraction depends upon two things. One is the slit size. Um, if I increase or decrease the slit size and I'm increasing the slit size over here, you will notice that uh, the diffraction is less and light kind of travels in straight lines over here because the opening is small. It's only that the edges over here diffracts the light. But when we decrease the slit width here, then the light diffracts more because the opening is less. So they are inversely related. And you can uh, relate this to a modern diffractive multifocal IUL. When you see this lens you are implanting in the patient's eye under the microscope, you will see that the steps are widths, the step widths of these uh, diffractive multifocal IULs kind of decreases as we move from the center to the periphery and that is because you need to diffract the light mode that passes through the periphery of the lens to reach it to the focal points so therefore these the size of the steps kind of comes down 
The another uh, good to know about diffraction is that it is also wavelength dependent. Uh, we know that the blue light wavelength is uh, smaller than the red light wavelength. So given us uh, the same slit size, slit opening over here, the blue light's wavelength will be smaller than the slit size. Uh, so therefore, it will diffract less. But with the same slit size, because the wavelength of light is more with for the red um, and the orange therefore it will diffract more right so these are the two things that we need to remember simple signs of diffraction All right, so now that we know diffraction, what is diffraction, uh, it is easier for us to understand uh, Thomas Young's double slit experiment here. Now, light uh, travels in waves. Uh, we um, understood that in the previous experiment. And when light actually passes through this to, with the, through the slit, it actually diffracts, it spreads. We learned that in our previous experiment. And then as it spreads, it goes through these two slits. And that is why it is called Thomas Young's double slit experiment, because this is the experiment that uh, through which Thomas Young showed the world that light actually travels in waves. Now, as light actually passes through these two slits, it spreads, it will interact with each other. Or in other words, it will there will be an interference of light that is created uh, when light actually comes from these two slits, because there are two wave fronts now. Now, as there is uh, an interference, there will be a positive interference of light and a negative interference or a destructive interference of light. Now, what do we understand by a positive or, dis or, or constructive interference of light? When light actually travels, um, it has uh, the highs or the crest of a wave and it will also have the trough or the low of a wave. Now, as the high of one wave meets the high of another wave, the crest meets the crest, there will be a bigger wave created that happens with sound, that happens with light also. And as a bigger wave or, or a constructive interference is created, you will find that if you place a screen, you will find this light is actually showing up over here. These are the places where constructive interference is happening because the high of one wave is meeting the high of another wave. So, and, and likewise, there will be also some light loss because of destructive interference. That is the high of one wave is meeting the low or the trough of another wave. Therefore, light loss is happening and you can see these shadows being created on the screen. So uh, the zero order is, um, is one which we call as, as the place of maximum intensity of light, the zero order. And this is the place which is bang opposite to midway of these two slits over here. And this is how Thomas Young showed the world that light travels in waves. Otherwise, what explains the zero order of maximum light intensity at this place where there is no slit, right? The slit is, um, the zero order is, uh, is, uh, is opposite to the midway of these two slits, right? And why there is a, is a place of maximum central intensity, maximum light intensity at the zero order is because that light actually is traveling equidistant from these two slits over here. So therefore, it is creating maximum light intensity. Now, if you have to, um, you know, uh, relate this to the multifocal eye wells, then the zero order could be your distance focal point. Light also likewise travels to other orders. You know, light does not actually just come and falls at the zero order. It will also go to the plus one, plus two, and n number of orders. And this plus one order will be a little less light than the zero order because light is not traveling equidistant over here. For example, at the plus one order, the light that is traveling from this slit is actually traveling uh, higher uh, uh, distance than this slit. So the plus one order could be your place of intermediate focal point for the uh, uh, trifocal IUL. Likewise, the plus two order is your near focal point for a trifocal IUL. Could be. 
And then there will be also some amount of light loss because light is now going to not only the zero plus one and plus two orders, but it is also going to three, four, five and n number of orders, or it is going to the minus orders, minus one, minus two, minus three, four, five orders. So the light reaching those orders other than the zero plus one and plus two orders is the light that is actually lost right also there is some light loss because of the destructive interference where there is no light created you know the shadows the dark bands of light uh, the shadows over here is the place where you have a destructive interference of light so bringing it all together for multifocal eye well so here you can see the uh, bull's eye over here which is at the center of the first uh, diffractive ring um, uh, and light that passes through this ring uh, is basically the base curvature of the lens. And this base curvature in the central bullseye could be designed for uh, the distance focal point. Um, yesterday years bifocal eye wheels uh, like the Vesto plus four plus three, they were all for the distance focal point. So any light that passed through this refractive region of the bullseye actually went to the zero order, which is your distance focal point and light that actually passed through the uh, through this part over here um through the first ring actually diffracted you know and it diffracted uh, and it reached the zero order uh, which is your distance focal point and it also reached the plus one plus two orders to reach the near and the intermediate focal points as well as it went uh, uh, to the three four five orders which was your light loss over here Again, um, the zero order is almost, is, if, you, if you design the uh, bifocal or trifocal IL with just one ring over here, you know, no company does that. But if you had only considered this one ring over here, um, then your zero order would be the brightest because the light is traveling equidistant over here. And subsequently, light as it reaches the plus one, plus two, it starts diminishing, right? Uh, because light is not traveling equidistant to any other orders except for the zero orders. So uh, to overcome that, what will you do? I mean, in order to make the intermediate and near focal points also get adequate amount of light, what would you do? Yes, you will design more steps over here, right? So as you design the steps over here, light will also go, uh, go to the zero order. It will come to the zero order again from this subsequent steps that are designed or etched in the lens, but it is also going to reach the plus one and the plus two orders, that is the intermediate and near focal points, thus making the intermediate and near focal points also get adequate amount of light. But in uh, physics, there's no free lunch. So as you build more steps or rings here, light is also going to equally go to the other diffractive orders three four five orders or minus one orders minus two orders and therefore there will be light loss and this light loss is a source could be a source of hellos and glare for the patients right so if there are um, patients complaining about hellos and glares that could be because of a high amount of light also going to to the uh, higher orders which are not actually utilized. So another important point over here is that that at what distances should successive steps or rings be designed in that multifocal IO so that all light that passes through the steps create a constructive interference and ultimately reach the zero order which is the distance focal point or the intermediate or the near focal points and the steps are designed in such a way that uh, all the light actually creates a constructive interference of light and they are in phase and they are not out of phase if you have an out of phase it will actually you know uh, create a destructive interference of light light loss will be more right so here you can see the blue and the red wave length of light are in close synchrony you know uh, they are creating a constructive interference of light here. So uh, so the way these steps are going to be uh, distanced from each other is that suppose um, the light that travels through this step takes two wavelengths of light to reach the distance focal point. 
Then the next tape would be built in such a way that light that passes through this tape will take free wavelength of light to reach the distance focal point. That is the difference between these two um, wavelength of light will be in whole numbers. It would be one wavelength of light or could be two wavelength of light or could be three wavelength of light to create constructive interference, but never in half, not um, wave, uh, half a wavelength of light or three-fourth of wavelength of light, uh, right? Uh, so the difference between the path that crossed to reach this distance focal point between two successive steps has to be in whole numbers. And for that, there are formulas that optical physics um, experts actually work with to create the constructive interference.